There was nothing about the starry sky that night. This is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I'm doing a post commentary, even though I pretend it's a live commentary instead sometimes. What you're looking at here right now is a roughly two minute intro. It's just an overview of the first several chapters of the book, about the first half hour of the movie as well. And this is normal, in an overview you have to cut out most of the detail just to get the basic story. But my problem with it here is that while they cut out some of the detail, including they show the Hogwarts Express, Ron or Hermione, neither of them are ever mentioned. The fact that Harry met them on the Hogwarts Express, nor they mentioned at all throughout this intro. You just see them later during the gameplay. I could maybe understand cutting Hermione, because Harry was not initially friends with her. That happened a little later in the story, but Ron was Harry's first friend in the new wizarding world he found himself in, and that just seems very bizarre. But, okay, if, if that were it, I wouldn't probably bother ranting about this. But it's the fact that they cut detail like that out, and then, later in this two-minute overview, what they decide to do is keep a lot of, in my opinion, unnecessary detail about the sorting hat ceremony. This is where Harry is saying to himself, not Slytherin, and the sorting hat is like, you would be great, you know. And this isn't really too important to the story of the Sorcerer's Stone. It's really only relevant in the Chamber of Secrets, where during a time of trouble, Harry is questioning his own underlying identity, perhaps. And this kind of scene would make more sense as a flashback in the next game. I mean, I guess you could make the argument that you have to show this in the first game, or else it doesn't make sense in the second game. But this assumes people are playing the games and they haven't read the book or seen the movie. I don't know, it's just weird that you don't mention Ron or Hermione on the Hogwarts Express and then you devote about half a minute to the Slytherin... Uh, not the Slytherin hat. The Sorting Hat telling Harry, you would be great in Slytherin. But, okay, if you insist, Gryffindor it is. Oh good, here we go. Now we get to have some fun and... You know, this looks nice and colorful and overall welcoming. Harry's looking around like, how do a few small torches light up a large room? Oh boy, here we go. Welcome to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I am Albus Dumbledore, your headmaster. I don't know why, but Dumbledore's glasses glitched up and look blocky. They would look like slit sunglasses from the 80s if the lenses didn't keep the half-moon shape as well. Only this morning, I took a wrong turn and stumbled upon a room full of chocolate frogs. Harry's like, the fuck is this guy talking about? Placed by a nasty horde of fire crabs. Now, up the stairs and off to your lessons. Oh, Dumbledore's voice changed suddenly. Placed by a nasty horde of fire crabs. Now, up the stairs and off to your lessons. Oh, okay. Alright then. Whoa. The mouse control feels very restrictive and imprecise, especially vertically. Hey, Harry! Remember me? Is his mouth not moving? Cool. Time to go on an adventure. Follow me, Harry. What the fuck did you think I was doing this whole time? It's not like you even checked on me and discovered that I hadn't walked 20 feet in your direction either. I was literally moving towards you, you fucking mouthless blowhole. As a first year, you have a lot to learn. Follow us for a secret lesson. I'll see you later in defense against the dark arts class. Good luck, Harry. Goodbye, you impatient fuck nugget. We're going to teach you how to climb. Run to the bookcase and don't stop. You'll climb up. But if I run into it without stopping, I'll break my glasses. And maybe my nose. And meet us in the next room. Yeah, just like that. Oh. Uh, okay, alright, bye.
Well done. Now, let's try jumping. Yeah, their mouths seriously aren't animated at all. This seems especially lazy given how the rest of the game looks, which for a PC game from 2001 seems fine to me. It doesn't have to look perfectly lip-synced with the dialogue or anything. You know, that rapid fire open and close anime style mouth animation would have been fine. I wonder why such a small detail was left out. Oh, what the shit, he nearly knocked me off. That's Peeves, the poltergeist. He's always causing trouble. Peeves doesn't like first years, so watch your step. Uh, guys? Am I supposed to do something about him? You're just gonna leave me here even though I haven't learned any magic yet? Oh boy, here we go. All right then. That's it. You're getting the hang of this. In Hogwarts, you find all sorts of wicked treats. To pick up a treat, just run over to it. Chocolate frogs boost your energy. Thirty bots every flavor beans are fun to collect. We're collecting them too. We need twenty-five beans, Harry. Come back when you've got them all. Come see us, and we'll show you the way to class. Have I been told why? I need to be collecting these beans yet. Well, turning the camera around takes like two entire mouse sweeps across the screen to get you turned 180 degrees. I can almost make that jump without needing to stop and climb. Stuck on the wall. Brilliant. See, like right there, I stop mid-turn because I have to physically pick up my mouse and move it back so I can keep sweeping it to the side again. So it takes almost two complete sweeps to turn 180 degrees. I don't know why I jumped off. I need to get back up there for the frog anyways. Okay, come on. Do something. Talk to Fred. He's the one with the wizard card. Are you fucking shitting me? You're both standing there. When I come back again, you should just do... whatever. We need the beans for some... <clears throat> experiments. Here's a wizard card for you. You've earned it. Climb through the secret exit above the bookcases to get to your first spell lesson. Good luck! What am I doing with my wand? I haven't been to a class yet. What is this shit? You'd better get going, or you'll be late for your first lesson. You'd better get going. Okay, now they give me the same response. Alright then, off to Defense Against the Dark Arts. Well, well, well. Oh shit! It's the mask! I'm Draco Malfoy, and you do well to show me respect. These are my fellow Slytherins, Crab and Goyle. Well, the lack of any mouth movement here is actually kind of disturbing. You better stay out of our way, Potter. Let's go, boys. Hello, Harry. It's me, Hermione Granger. We met on the Hogwarts Express, remember? Actually, no. That detail was somehow forgotten in the two-minute intro. <laughs> nice. She leads him inside, and Harry's like, eh, I'd rather sit with the impatient fuckboy over here instead. The dark magic with the flippendo spell. This is the symbol for the flippendo spell. Okay, not having the mouth move is literally an annoyance that's staring me right in the face now. What the fuck? I find this portion of the lesson to be rather... Well, annoying isn't the right word, but it is slightly stressful when you have to move the mouse in an exact pattern under a time limit. 
Fortunately, the mouse cursor acts normally here, unlike when you control the camera, or else this would be impossible. Well done, Mr. Potter. Five points for Gryffindor. G go on, Mr. Potter. T -t Try again. Oh, and I think the time limit gets shorter every time you retry this pattern exercise. So you have that happen along with the increased accuracy requirements the next time around. That was spot on, Mr. Potter. Ten points for Gryffindor. T -t -t Try again, Mr. Potter. I find the stuttering here to be slightly annoying even though they're being faithful to the book in this case. I hope that doesn't make me a bad person, but hearing it in the game just makes it feel like the dialogue is going on for longer than it really should. The house with the most points at the end of the year wins the house cup. Fifteen points for Gryffindor. Actually, I changed my mind. I don't feel bad about it because I know he's faking it anyways. Oh yeah, I'm assuming that anyone watching these videos has already read the books, or at least watched the movies and knows how the plot unfolds anyways. It's not my fault if I spoil anything for you. Wow, I really fucked that last attempt up. 30 points for drawing a squiggle isn't bad, though. Splendid! You may now enter the Flipendo Challenge to practice the spell! Follow me, Mr. P P Potter. Hold t down the mouse button. Where the fuck is the mouse button on this stick? The button to cast the spell. T -t Try it on that b barrel. Okay, look around real quick. Okay, nothing else in here. Yeah. Okay, red carpet for the famous Harry Potter. How fitting. The atmosphere in here reminds me of the inside of some of the Arabian temples and Bugs and Taz Time Busters. Some of them were even bathed in blue light. Cast your flipendo spell at the switch on the wall to open the d door. Flipendo affects all sorts of things, such as this cauldron. Knock it over, Mr. P Potter. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of times where I'm just knocking the beans out of objects. And that might be necessary when actually playing the game to accumulate a lot of beans, but it makes for repetitive action that I struggle to commentate on. Okay, apparently can't jump up there. I don't know what I'm gonna... Oh, yeah, of course. How many challenge stars are there for me to collect anyways? The only Harry Potter series game I've ever played before making these videos was the third one, Prisoner of Azkaban. You had to get challenge shields instead, but you always knew from the beginning how many you were supposed to actually obtain. What? You're just gonna stand there in the meantime? Okay. And, just like the third game, which I actually recorded before starting the Sorcerer's Stone, might as well make a series out of all the games, the hardest part of the game to actually talk about were the lessons, and just walking around the school and exploring was generally more interesting to me. Hello, Harry Potter. I am Nearly Headless Nick, the Gryffindor House Ghost. Now, this is a save game book. I don't see why a ghost's voice should echo in a hallway more so than any other sound waves that are generated. If you faint, you can also load a saved game from the main menu. Well, of course I can. If I couldn't, then what would be the point of having a save game feature in the first place? You can also load a saved game from the main menu. For fuck's sake, dude, we knew this already. Okay, there's no way candles alone. Oop, blocked the camera. 
Anyways, there's no way candles alone would illuminate a windowless room so brightly. Unless Harry's pupils are very dilated or... I don't know, maybe... maybe it's magic. And look, right here. There are windows here and the hallway seems dimmer than that room. Like it's mid-evening or something, even though it's my first lesson and presumably it's sometime in the morning. What the fuck did that even do? Oh, I guess I have to get all of them. Hey, I wasn't done with the cauldron, you fucking cutscene. Oh, and the goddamn wall blocked me too. Cast your flippendo spell on this block to knock it out of the way. Oh shit, I forgot the room that the game cutscene literally steered me towards earlier. Oh wow. That would have been embarrassing if I had missed a challenge star like that. Okay, well, I complained about the fact that it's more difficult to talk about the, uh, the lessons themselves, but at least they're adding new things, like... Yeah, it's a sliding block. Yeah, that's new. It would be cool if there was a spell where you could cast at two parts of a wall and create holes that you can jump through. Just like the Portal Gun in the Portal series of games. Although, that would be pointless if you're just gonna learn how to... Uh, teleport a few years from now. The moaning noises from the ghosts would make me a little more afraid to roam around this castle if it wasn't for the background music. It's nice and cheerful and everything. Besides, the one ghost that flew right past me when I learned how to climb a bookshelf all over again never bothered me. Oh, and I met nearly headless Nick, too, and he was kind enough to tell me twice in the time span of a minute how the save game feature works. Peeves was an asshole, though. Fuck that guy. Wow, that sucks. I don't know why this recording freezes for a split second occasionally. I built, like, a budget gaming PC in mid-2014. And this game was released in 2001, so I'm not sure why it happens. I don't know, maybe the computer is doing something else. Might have left Google Chrome open in the background, I forget. Nintendo. Yeah, it's always cool when I can find two challenge stars back to back in under half a minute. Oh yeah, moving platform time. I kept overshooting this part of the challenge when I tried to play this game in windowed mode while experimenting with recording software. Ugh, Jesus. Thank fuck I finally got MSI Afterburn and... and Reva Tuner Statistics Server or whatever to work with the game. But like, whenever I played this in windowed mode, I don't know why, but the game would operate at a few hundred frames per second instead of... When I played it in full screen mode, and it's locked at 60 frames a second like it's supposed to be. But it's not like the game was very obviously running several times faster than it was supposed to. It ran what felt like somewhere between 20 and 50% faster than what it was supposed to. So it wasn't immediately obvious until I started running in certain places and the whole game seemed to speed up. Such as this part of the challenge where I did a running jump onto the platforms and I kept overshooting and dying. If I had been able to hit that from the side, I could have just jumped into that room right now. It would have been much more efficient. Nintendo. Oh, but of course, it still lets me hit it from this distance. Nintendo. I guess spells just don't work if your angle is wrong. Oh boy, another challenge star. Uh... I wonder if the teachers have students collect these just so they can say the students helped decorate the Christmas trees. Even if it is only indirect help. I'm almost at the end, right? Yes! Finally! Oh, wait. Is there more?
<laughs> the fuck was that? This is a gnome, Mr. Potter. They like to p p pester young wizards. Knock him on his b b backside to complete the challenge. They move quickly and c can be c quite a nuisance. So I just blow them up with Flipendo and I'm done? Oh shit, no! Get back, get back! What? No, 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 my- oh fuck. Did they just taunt me by twerking? Okay, finally I'm defeating these guys, but it's like I lost three beans per hit and they disappeared. God, I think I lost 12 beans. God damn potato elves. Uh, fantastic. I got two beans back. What a disaster. C Congratulations, Mr. P -P Potter. You completed the challenge. You collected all the challenge stars. 20 p points for Gryffindor. I don't even give a shit about points. How about some beans? Practice. 